I am a certified DataBricks engineering associate and have experience of working in DataBricks for more than five years. I had made a complete detailed video on how you can prepare for DataBricks engineer associate certification in less than seven days. Do check that out. The link is in the description box. Okay. Now let's talk about this series. So I had started this series on the question and a detailed explanation of each of the solution. This series will help you guys get your concepts clear and be ready for the exams. And in between the lectures, I am also going to share a lot of tricks and tips for the exam and the certification. So stay tuned in the video. Let's get started. So let's start with the first question. Which of the following describes the benefit of a data lakehouse that is unavailable in a traditional data warehouse? So here the question is, what is the benefit of data lakehouse which is not available in a traditional data warehouse? So before going to the question, let's see an image. Here we will see the pipeline of data pipeline of de Delta Lake. Okay, as you can see, so here's the pipeline. What happens here? A data in a raw form, like in batches and streaming, go inside this raw data. Then it passes through a different levels like bronze, silver, and gold. Like in a bronze, a raw data goes. Then in a silver, it got filtered. Then in a gold, it is ready for in a purpose. We will discuss this in the further in the video. But for now, it passes through these different layers. Then it is used for business intelligence, machine learning purpose, all these things. So this is a more a pipeline or we can say for a data lake. As you can see these, the batch and streamings are available here. So the correct answer for this is what is the benefit of data lake house over traditional data warehouse house is a data lake house enables both batch and streaming analytics, which is possible is data lake house. Okay. So before moving on to the next question, let's see some of the few more advantages of data lake house over traditional data warehouse. So let's see and understand the differences. So first we, when we talk about a data storage type, data warehouse is only does well with structured data while a data lake house, when we talk about data lake house, it can handle structured, semi-structured and unstructured data. Now, when we talk about the purpose, data warehouse optimal for data analytics and business intelligence purpose only. While a data lake house can do both with business intelligence, data analytics, as well as machine learning workloads. When we talk about the cost, storage is costly and time consuming in data warehouse. While when we talk about the cost here, the storage is cost effective, fast and flexible. Okay, now let's talk about another important comparison is acid compliance. So when we talk about data warehouse, so both the things are acid compliant. Okay, so data lake is also an acid compliant to ensure consistency as multiple parties concurrently read or write data. So in a data lake house, multiple parties are reading, writing the data concurrently. So it is acid compliant for the consistency purpose. Okay. Let me show you one more visual imagination. Okay. So here you can also see when we talk about a data warehouse. So structured data goes inside this while when we talk about data less unstructured data like structured data plus semi structured data plus unstructured data. Every data can go inside this data lake house and it is transformed and the different visualization reports data science machine learning these things can be used for. So unstructured semi structured data like images, videos, audios, everything can go inside this data lake house. Okay. So now let's move to the next question. Which of the following locations host the drivers and worker nodes of a Databricks managed clusters? Okay. The question is at which location the drivers and worker nodes of a Databricks managed cluster is available. So before going to, on to this question, let's see the structure, how the thing is handled here. What are the different planes? Let's talk about two important plan that is control plan and data plan. So inside control plan, what things are available like web application, customer notebooks, jobs, queries, cluster management, SSO, everything is available in the cluster plane. Okay. In the data plan, what what is available like Apache Spark cluster data processing. So the nodes and everything, whatever we talk about is available inside this data plan. While in a control plan, all these things are available. So let's go on to the question. Question is the location host the drivers and worker nodes of a Databricks managed cluster. So where in which location the drivers and worker nodes are available, that is a data plan. Okay. 
you can see in a control plane job queries customer notebooks application cluster management all these things are available but the notes and everything is available in the data plane so the correct answer for this is a data plane where the drivers and worker notes are available now let's move on to the third question so let's read the third question A data architect is design a data model that work for both video based machine learning workloads and highly audited batch ETL workloads. Okay, so he's saying a data architect is designing a data model. So he's designing a data model that will work both for video videos also and highly audited for audios also. Okay, so which of the following describes how using a data lake house can help the data architect meets the need of both workloads. So question is what he should choose among these so that his workload can be managed for both audios and videos okay so as we can see in the images like the data in lake house is acid compliant as well as a data lake house can work well with different type of structure semi structure like audios videos as you can see here so the most appropriate answer will be for this question will be a data lake house stores unstructured data and is acid compliant unstructured data you can store and it is aside acid compliant so the more appropriate answer will be this for the third question now let's move on to the fourth question okay which of the following describes a scenario in which a data engineer will want to use a job cluster instead of an all-purpose cluster so the question is in which scenario a data engineer will choose a job cluster instead of all purpose cluster so when he will choose a job cluster instead of all purpose cluster for that we should understand the difference between a job cluster and all purpose cluster then we can decide in which scenario he will use the job cluster so let's understand the difference between all purpose cluster and job cluster okay so when we should all use all purpose cluster when we want to perform multiple operations like debugging querying loading data ad hoc run that time we can use all purpose cluster but when we want to schedule a job like we want to run some job at every one hour at that time we will use a job cluster okay so what will be the benefit of all-purpose cluster and job cluster let's understand so what happens in all-purpose cluster is it will get the cluster will terminate it when you decide to terminate it until and unless you don't terminate it will keep on going running so it will increase the cost right in the all-purpose cluster but what happens in a job cluster job cluster is mainly used for when you want suppose you have scheduled a job every one hour if you want to run a job every one hour but suppose that job takes only five minutes to run successfully so what will happen suppose you start a job now and after a five minute when the job runs gets completed the cluster will get terminated and after 55 minutes again it will start when the one hour is complete then it will start again like suppose you started at 2 pm within five minutes the job gets run successfully and at 2 5 it get terminated and then again at three the cluster will restart again then the job will run again for five minutes so what this will do this will drastically improve the cost and reduce the cost and it will be really help for saving money so job cluster should be preferred when you want to do some periodical or scheduled jobs like every one or every two or something like that and you should use all purpose cluster when you have to do a different lot of operation like debugging querying loading data ad hoc runs everything okay let's go to the question now so the question is clearly simple which in which scenario he should use a job cluster instead of an all-purpose cluster so answer would be an automated workflow needs to be run every 30 minutes now here what happens automated workflow like a job which needs to be run every 30 minutes so he wants to schedule something so in this scenario we are going to use a job cluster because once the job is run it will get terminated the cluster and the cost will be reduced okay now let's move on to the next question the question is a data engineer has created a de delta table as a part of a data pipeline okay data pipeline so one data engineer is there who created a delta table now a, another a data analyst now needs select permission on the delta table so the table which was created by data uh, data engineer one data analyst need access to run a select permission on this delta table assuming data engineer is the delta table owner suppose he had created this delta table so he is the owner of the delta table the data engineer is now he want to give access to this delta analyst a select permission he want to give him 
so on which platform he should give the permission look like doing select retrieve or doing any kind of data exploratory things everything happens on a data explorer platform okay like repos jobs data brick file system these are different things but whatever the data exploration things like select retrieve things happen happens in a data explorer so correct answer for this question will be a data explorer he should give a permission on this data explorer to a data analyst to run a select permission okay now let's move on to the next question the sixth question now the question is two junior data engineers are authoring separate parts of a single data pipeline notebook so the question is two junior data engineers are working on a single data pipeline notebook and they are authoring separate parts okay of the same notebook they are working on a separate grid branches so they can pair program on the same notebook simultaneously so they are working on the different grid branch so after the changes they can pair it together but a senior data engineer saw the situation and experienced senior engineer and he suggested them a better alternative for this type of collaboration so what he does he given better solution so what will be the better solution that a senior data engineer claims okay so let's see the options when we see the options like automatic change tracking versioning like no commenting and notifying comments multiple language in the same notebook interactive data visualization so all these thing won't help for the two engineer guys to do the changes and save the same at same time okay when you see the words like two data engineers authored authoring separate parts okay so there are two and they are authoring so what will be the solution the databricks notebook supports real time co-authoring on a single notebook so this is a right answer okay when you are looking for the solution and op options you can see the words and you might get a right answer so databricks notebook supports real time co-authoring on a single notebook so this is a more appropriate answer for this question okay now let's move on to the seventh question so the seventh question is which of the following describes how databrick repos can help facilitate ci cd workflows on the databrick slackhouse platform so how these databrick repos can help ci cd workflows on the this databrick slackhouse platform so for that let's see in some images okay here this is if you go on the databricks workflow you will see in the left side workspace repos and everything will be there when you go into repos and you click on any file or something like that will open and you can see you can do a commit and push in this repos okay commit and push option is available inside this repos so when we go into the question this e is the most appropriate answer for this question like databricks repos can commit or push code changes to trigger a ci cd process okay next move on to the next question which of the following statement describes delta lake okay so which of the following statement describes a delta lake more appropriately is an when you search what is delta lake you will find that delta lake is an open format storage layer okay so delta lake is an open format storage layer that delivers reliability security and performance so as compared to all the other options this is a more appropriate answer for this question what describes the delta lake it is an open format storage layer that delivers reliability security and performance let's move on to the ninth question so there is one data architect and he has to design this table okay you can see the table in front of you which has three columns like id birth date average rating and inside that you can see the ids have like a1 a2 it is a string values the birth date has date values and average rating has float values so which sql command out of these five he should choose to create the table regardless of whether table exist or not okay so when you can see the a and the d command okay there is an as statement as select so this is not a correct way to create a table so this is get eliminated this e is also not right because with column doesn't come so when we talk about b or c like create or replace table table name and inside parenthesis should be the column name so this b and c is a more appropriate way so most in the most scenarios this is will get you the re desired output in some scenarios it might fail so it's better to choose the option number b create or replace table then your table name and inside parenthesis the column names and their data types like id should be string a1 a2 birth date should be like date data type and average rating is a float okay in the next lecture we will see further more questions in this series okay 
सब्सक्राइब द चैनल एंड लाइक द वीडियो ओके थैंक यू सो मच शेयर एंड वॉच द नेक्स्ट पार्ट